Today is going to be a little bit of an adventure, some nature, and some history. We're gonna all roll it in together and that's what the video is gonna be in the end. So stick around, see what we're into, and uh, maybe learn something along the way. I know I did, and uh, it was a lot of fun getting there too. And we got a beautiful day, so come along. crossing the suspension bridge. That's, a, that's the car bridge. And then you have a beach area you can go. Nice little spot. Water's not too deep. You can see there. sculptures. Walking along the trail in the woods going to Hearst Lodge. A little bit of root system, so we gotta walk up and along, and we're following this uh, Salmon River. But eventually, if you go the other way, following the current, you'll go underneath the suspension bridge. This is supposed to be a moderate trail that's 2.6 kilometers one way. There are bridges, there are ladders, there are cables, and roots galore. And lots of rock, but beautiful views. We have arrived at the lodge. You can see there's a couple of outbuildings. The main building here. They're all boarded up right now. I don't know when the last time it was used, but they do have solar panels, so. And I saw uh, disability entrance. Welcome to Hearst Lodge. That's how they keep it on the grid, or off the grid. Let's see what we can see. Everything will be locked up. I see a fridge. So this is the entrance to the kitchen. And then off the main area, got the staircase. Let's see what we can see inside. Seeing a lot of reflection. I can see a stone fireplace. See that? Some nice leather chairs or leatherette chairs. Probably leather though. But more important, look at the view. I think people came up here a long time ago and used this river for fishing.
I must admit, going to the Hearst Lodge, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I knew a little bit about William Randolph Hearst and uh, his background. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and I knew that this lodge had had celebrities at it. It was kind of a place to go. It was a big fishing retreat at one point in time. But other than that, it was kind of a mystery. It was kind of that lodge down in the middle of the wilderness for the longest time until the Fundy Trail Parkway was built. So after it's been built, and that's only been up a few years now, uh, they had easy access for the general public to, to get in and to see this lodge. Now, I said easy access, but if you saw the trail we were on, it does take some maneuvering to get in that way. There is an access road you can drive in. I didn't know that, but I did really wanted to do the hike. So let me talk a little bit about... Uh, William Randolph Hearst and why he chose New Brunswick, why he had anything to do here. Um, he was uh, born to a uh, senator from California uh, who has made his money as, as a millionaire in the gold uh, mining industry. And William was born in 1863. He took on his first newspaper of the San Francisco Examiner. And from that, he expanded his empire in uh, newspaper and magazines to become one of the largest in the world in the industry. Uh, he had over 30 newspapers at one point in time and uh, magazines. He was a, an avid uh, Democratic political figure in the early goings of his career. He was elected twice as a Democrat to the House of Representatives. Uh, he had a failed attempt to become president in 1904 and uh, two failed attempts to be mayor of New York City in 1905 and 1909 as well. Uh, he went from being a, kind of a, a left-wing supporter uh, to, after the First World War, being more into isolationism. And uh, then his politics uh, grew even more and more conservative with the rise of Adolf Hitler in the, the 30s in Germany. He gave, became a supporter of the Nazi party, and he even gave uh, uh, opportunities for Nazi supporters to put their views in his newspapers, and he put a lot of his opinions in those newspapers too to promote. He was a big first person to create sensationalism in journalism, uh, big titles, bold, um, um, bold lures on sex and politics and uh, addictions, that sort of thing. Uh, he brought you in with the titles and uh, tried to grab your attention to, in order to sell his newspapers and magazines. That was kind of what he was known for. Um, but yeah, he had strong right-wing opinions. <laughs> so that's his political side of him. And the business side, uh, as we talked about, uh, big into newspapers, but when you're, you've got newspapers, you need paper. And one of the things that New Brunswick has a lot of is trees. So he came to New Brunswick and bought a piece of land up the Salmon River. I put a map here along the Bay of Funday. Um, and uh, up the Salmon River, he put a pulp mill at the top, a uh, sawmill at the top, excuse me, and uh, started cutting down trees in order to create a, a, a resource for his, all his newspapers and magazines that he was there. Uh, he died in 1951. And one of his sons, uh, William Randolph Jr., uh, William Randolph Hearst Jr., excuse me, uh, his second son was one of the people that took over. And uh, where they had the sawmill and the salmon river, the salmon river apparently it was so deep in salmon at one point, in Atlantic salmon at one point in time, you could almost walk across the river. There were so many salmon. That's, that's the legend anyways, that there was that many at one point in time. As you can see during our hike today, a lot of it is uh, rocky. There are some pools, there are some uh, um, fast running water in there, but not really many salmon to be seen anymore. When uh, Junior passed away in 1993, the New Brunswick government took over the lodge. The lodge was created in 61. Uh, it was created by laborers that would come down from the sawmill and wanted a place to fish. Uh, it saw celebrities that were there for the, that came with the Hearst family. Uh, Donald Sutherland, who was from uh, St. John, New Brunswick, is an actor. Uh, he has gone and fished there. Frank Sinatra has gone many times and fished there. Our Prime Minister, Diefenbaker, back in the day, went there to fish. Uh, 
And, and then in the 94, when the New Brunswick government took it over, it became a great place for uh, big executives to come in. The Irving Corporation here in New Brunswick, which is also big into pulp and paper and digital me or, um, and newspapers and gas and oil. Uh, they used to have retreats there. Their executives would go there. New Brunswick politicians, uh, Canadian politicians would come down and fish there as well. And then later on, it became more of a um, public destination. It wasn't quite so exclusive anymore. People could go in there and rent it as a B&B. &B. There was talk in 2020 that with the opening of the Fundy Trail Parkway that um, um, it would be used more. But COVID hit kind of put a damper on things but there is still rumors out there they're going to open it back up to do more things uh you were at one point in time you were able to go in there and get uh, a breakfast and a lunch out of the kitchen uh you were able to stay in the cabins um it's all very wooded rustic looking uh put up some pictures there of different things all the materials was kind of sourced from the area the uh, concrete was made from stones from the river the large fireplace that they have in the uh, main room are all stones from the big salmon river as well uh, so in order to create it they had to use a lot of the resources around them uh, luckily there was lots of wood there was lots of stone to be had and that's why we have the hearst lodge whether it's a great family name to be associated with it's still part of history and uh, so that's there it's there as a nice hiking trail now uh, some pirates is very difficult uh, for new people that you have to be confident with your footing there are lots of root systems you have to maneuver there are cables there are ladders and uh, bridges you have to go across so uh, th there's some challenges to go with it but it has been said that it is just uh, at a moderate level so it's not super hard but it it's a decent amount it took us um about 45 minutes to come back but a little over an hour to get out there and uh, the weather was ideal for us. Uh, we went at the right time of day there were no bugs so that was great too and all around not a bad hike. Uh, I did work up a sweat doing it and I got to learn a little history so hopefully you enjoyed the history too and I've put up a few pictures and maps and things you can see along the way what it looks like and you got to see the uh, the trail as we did it. So. That's it for today. Have a magical week. Like, follow? You say like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs>